side corner first. Oh, that guy's long. He had no choice. thing to do with horseshoe driveways is cut that inside line cleanly. Which I got it as good as I could. Uh, the rest of it's just gonna have to be that way. You have to get in there and clean it up with a shovel if need be. But the inside line looks pretty good. Now it's a matter of pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back. My bad. Wasn't expecting that to be so close. It'd be nice if this driveway had driveway markers. Although it does not. It's a Belgian lock driveway. I despise. Which I can't say I've ever officially knocked over, really damaged any Belgian block, but I wouldn't be too concerned if I did. Definitely wouldn't be the end of the world because basic masonry is not that complicated. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube of how to do basic masonry. I've attempted a couple of masonry projects on my own, and I'm definitely not the best, but each time you do it, you learn a thing or two. Like the first time I did it, I had two bricks, and I didn't wet anything. Well, it, they actually weren't bricks, they were kind of like stone slabs. It was like, uh, no, jeez. It was like the trim on a building had like this stone edge and a piece of it broke away from the building. And getting back to the initial story, I had trouble getting the mortar to stick to the stones or bricks, whatever you want to call them. And the reason was I didn't wet the stones. In order for that stuff to stick, normally you need to wet the piece that you want to bond to. Which there's a, a guy I watch on YouTube, I, I really enjoy his videos. His name is Mike Hot. Hurat. 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 And he is a master masonry, master, master mason. Whatever. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on four hours of sleep in 38 hours. So. Tipsy. Which they say being extremely tired is just as bad, if not worse, than being drunk. And then, I find that to be 100% true, which you wouldn't think. You'd think, oh, I'm just tired, I can combat that, I'm good. Well, try staying awake for. Eight hours and only get four hours of sleep. It does funny things to your mind. I'm not saying I'm seeing anything, but in some cases where I normally put the extra effort in, or well, in cases where I'd always put the extra effort in without question, it's 
like I start questioning myself or just being maybe just being lazy I guess that's actually kind of logical I'm tired I don't want to do as much work but as much effort yeah just babbling on anybody still watching we used to have this interesting video to watch this is uh this is pretty cool not every day I plow 20 inches snow with this little truck. Oh, well, if you had a 350 view, I'd be in and out of there in probably a quarter of the time, and I'd be much more efficient, and the way you plow is ridiculous. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't know if those comments will ever end, but I tell you, a lot of them crack me up. A lot of these guys, I don't know, maybe they got size issues, and themselves appear bigger by talking with their large ignorant mouths. I mean, yes, some points are absolutely valid, like you're doing commercial work, sure, a uh, big diesel would be the better choice, absolutely, but don't underestimate that you can't make money with a four-wheel drive F-150, because you absolutely can. I don't really have too much experience with the V6s. I think I got a question about that the other day. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure how much power they have. I mean, of course you gotta have some power. My truck has the V8 4.6 liter engine, which I believe is a very common engine amongst Mustangs. Mustangs. It was just a huge pile of snow hitting my quarter pin. The motors you gotta watch out for are the 5.4 liter. I heard there's a lot of problems with changing the spark plugs in those. I had a mechanic change my spark plugs in this truck. I wanted to do it on my own, but I got kind of nervous because I heard such bad things about the 5.4. And he pulled out all the plugs and none broke. So I was very thrilled about that. That happened, uh, geez, maybe about two years ago now. And if one does break, they do have a special extraction tool. But he told me that each one that broke would be like $100, because each time one broke, he would have to use a specialized single-use disposable extraction tool. I guess that cost like, I don't know, he said $100, which, eh, you know, you know, mechanics, he probably got it for 50 and he was jacking the price up, make a buck, which, you know, I understand you're trying to make a buck, but this is why uh, a lot of people have trust issues with mechanics. You know, we've heard if business is slow, then mechanics may look further and find problems that don't necessarily have to be fixed or make fake problems and, you know definitely some trust issues with mechanics you put the dealers I've, I've heard stories about people taking their car to the dealer and finding all types of things wrong with it because I'm sure business was slow at the dealer service center and then they take it to a regular mechanic and the regular mechanic says I don't know what the dealer was telling you they're just hungry for money I don't know it's it's hard to know who to trust anymore back in the day back in the what the 1950s you know a man was only as good as his words that came out his mouth you know you can trust a guy, you can trust him. Now you can't trust anybody. I guess you can trust some people. I mean, maybe you can trust your, I don't know, parents, relatives, family members, to an extent. Unless they're a crackhead, of course, because, you know, crackheads and drug addicts, you know, they'll 
they'll say or do whatever they need to do to get their fix. That's why I will never give money to homeless people. Never. If I have a business, I'd offer them a job, but I will never donate to homeless people off the street. Why don't you go out there and get a real job? Try, instead of begging. Which, you know, if, if you think about it, I, you could understand why they beg. All they do is just stand around with a, a sad poster and people fall for it and then they just collect super easy money, which, you know, it, it works for them. I don't have any respect for them for doing it, but I, I can understand why they do it. And also, I, I have a uh, bit of a hard time donating to charities. Whenever I'm at the grocery market and they ask, hey, do you want to donate $5 to help starving children in Africa? Yeah, that's great. You know, I'd, sure, I'd, I, I guess I wouldn't mind spending $5 for the starving children in Africa. But, but, you never know whether, uh, well, I guess you do know, but you got to be careful because a lot of these organizations may be uh, partially for profit or they may take a percentage of what you donated and, I don't know, do something with that money as opposed to giving 100% of the profits or proceeds to, uh, to the actual children in need. So there's some education for you. Now uh, I'm going to go out here and shovel this walk up to the door and those of you that have seen my shovel arsenal I'm gonna use the one with the curved handle because this is very dense snow it's very wet and heavy good packing snow great for building a snowman great for sledding terrible for snow plowing and terrible for shoveling alrighty let's go I don't know if I mentioned it in previous videos, but if you have a Belgian block driveway, chances are there's a corner which will lead to the walk. And what I've done is I've dug in out that corner, a Belgian block by hand, so I could see where it is as opposed to feeling where it is. So now I'm going to get in here and push it back a little bit. That way I reduce the chances of damage to the client's property as well as my snow plow. My baby. was done earlier and are finished here. 